Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Gazia Ruby. So the Gazia Ruby is a new line of commercial espresso machines from Gazia. And I say new, it's new to Gazia, but the Ruby has been selling for a few years across Europe under the brand name of Quality Espresso, an Evoca group who bought Gadget Professional, the commercial side of Gadget in 2018, also own Quality Espresso. So they're now selling the Ruby under the brand name of Gadget within the UK. So it's new to Gadget, but it's been around for a bit. I've been really looking forward to doing this. And the reason for that is, I think potentially these are really interesting home espresso machine because they are commercial espresso machines. They're not prosumer espresso machines that are made to be sort of commercial grade with home use in mind. They are truly commercial machines. They're made for commercial use, but made as more compact commercial machines, which is what makes them also suitable as home barista espresso machines. In the Ruby range of three models, this one, the Ruby, has a three litre water tank, a 1.5 litre boiler with a 1500 watt element, and this is a heat exchanging machine, which means you can pull the shot, steam the milk, and actually dispense water as well at the same time, all via one boiler, and it does that via the heat exchanger system. If you want to know more about the different types of boiler, dual boiler, single boiler and heat exchanger, go to coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash boilers. I've written a post there that explains the differences. The Ruby machines don't have a PID to digitally control the temperature. Instead, the temperature is controlled mechanically via a pressure switch and that's something that can be adjusted manually if required. It's a vibration pump machine. It's got an E61 type group. It has a nice big cup warmer, as you can see, and the cup warmer does get nice and warm because it's literally sitting right above the boiler, which is just here. I'm talking about the top, really easy to access the inner to the machine. Just a couple of screws here and you're straight inside. In fact, let's have a look inside while we're talking about it. Here's two screws. Give you a closer look. There you can see it's a really straightforward espresso machine inside. There's your 1.5 litre boiler. And anybody who knows a bit about espresso machines will be able to tell you that that's a fairly Simple structure inside, nice and easy to maintain, easy to get to. There's a water tank, really easy to take out and put back in. The one thing I would say is I would personally recommend against filling it in situ because even with this top plate on, it will be quite easy to miss and pour water right inside the machine, which probably wouldn't be great, so probably is better to just pull the water tank out and fill it and put it back in. Anyway, there you go, that's inside the machine. This one, the Ruby, is £1,999, well that's the RRP. You can get it at the moment on offer from Gaja Direct and I'll put a link to them in the description below for £1,499, so £1,500 for this model, the Ruby. The Ruby Pro is even more impressive with a five litre boiler and it's available with either two vibration pumps or a rotary pump and the rotary pump version can be plumbed in. The Ruby Pro 2 group has a 6.5 litre boiler and is available either with a five litre water tank and three vibration pumps or a plumbable version with a rotary pump. And the Ruby Pro 1 Group is on offer at the moment at Gaja Direct for £1,899. So as you can see, this isn't a tiny machine along the lines of the Sage Bambino Plus and the Gaja Classic, etc. that I've reviewed recently. Bit bigger at 31 by 37 centimetres, but depth-wise it's 51 centimetres. So you're going to need 51 centimetres of depth on your kitchen worktop. 
It has a professional steam wand, which I'm really looking forward to trying out shortly. There's a nice big drip tray, which is removable. And it's got these non-slip professional knobs and porta filter. And it's got two volumetric shot buttons, single shot and double shot, and a manual shot button continuous espresso. And on paper, and to look at, the Ruby is a really impressive machine. But importantly, what's it like to use? Let's find out. And just to say, I'm using the Niche Zero today with the Gazza Ruby. There are other grinders I could have used, but I think this level of machine, we should do it justice by using this level of grinder. The Niche Zero is a brilliant grinder, more than capable of being paired with high-end espresso machines, such as the Gazza Ruby. So it seems appropriate to use the Zero with this machine. I've done a review video of the Niche Zero. If you click here, there should be a link to that video. And if you want to read the blog post review, that's at coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash nz. The coffee I'm using today is from bluecoffeebox.com. Blue Coffee Box are a multi-roaster subscription firm, so you get coffee each month from different origins, different varietals, different processing methods, etc. via different roasters. And if you are going to try the Blue Coffee Box subscription, they give an £8 discount off your first box to Coffee Blog readers and viewers. So if you just use the code CB999, that's CB for Coffee Blog, 999, you'll get that discount. And I am an affiliate of Blue Coffee Box, by the way, so if you do subscribe to Blue Coffee Box using that code, as well as you getting £8 off your first bag, I'll get a small commission as well. So thank you very much. So I'm going to try starting off and about 14. I've not used this coffee before, so just having a guess. I'm using the double basket. Oh, by the way, it's a standard sized, commercial sized porter filter, 58 mil. So we'll go for 18 grams in, one to two ratio. So 18 grams in to 32 grams out in between 28 and 32 seconds is what I'm after. This one is roasted by Neighbourhood Coffee Roasters, by the way. I'm going to pull this shot manually, which means I'm just going to press the middle button, the continuous espresso button, rather than the volumetric buttons. You can do that, you can set them, you can pre-program the single cup or double espresso button, but I always prefer to pull shots manually. A um, bit fast there, 24 seconds, but still, nice looking shot. I'll dial in a bit. Well, it doesn't look bad, does it? A bit under extracted, I suspect, because it ran a bit fast. Yep, slightly, but still not bad. Nice hot shot of espresso, that. So we'll go slightly finer and try that again. Let's try this. A bit better. It's more like it. I 
could dial in slightly more, but that's very close. Get the tiger stripe in. And that is a nice tasting shot of espresso. This is a Brazilian pulp natural from Neighbourhood Coffee Roasters. Very, very nice tasting shot of espresso. And so far, really impressed with pulling shots, really straightforward. I like how the porter filter only has to catch slightly into the group. On a lot of machines, you put the porter filter in and you have to pull it all the way over here. With this, it's really easy in and out. You can see that it's been made with commercial use in mind. If you're using this all day long, I would assume it would be a really good machine to use because you don't have to be constantly locking it in all the way over here. It's nice and easy. It's quite, well, it's not quite, it's a very adjustable steam one, this. It's a four hole tip. Ooh, powerful. Really is a commercial machine this. See how quick that was? That was ridiculously quick. And I've probably overstretched it as well because I wasn't ready for how powerful that was going to be. So there you go, you've seen me using the Gaja Ruby and overall really, really impressed. Shot quality from what I've tasted and I've had a few shots from it today, really good, really impressed with that, really impressed with the machine overall, the quality, it just feels like a commercial espresso machine because it is a commercial espresso machine, it's just slightly smaller than most commercial espresso machines. But as I say, really nice to use. With the steam, as you saw, I'm not used to that kind of power. To date, probably the most powerful machine I've used, except for my barista training where I did use a powerful machine, but I was under expert tuition then and I was spending a lot of time practicing on that machine. Other than that, I've mainly used domestic and prosumer espresso machines, which have less steam power and are a bit easier to get on with. The most powerful machine I've used until this has probably been the ACS Minima that had a really powerful steam boiler. The Profitec Pro 600 is quite a powerful boiler as well, but that came to me with a two-hole steam tip and a four-hole tip delivers the steam more aggressively. This has got a four-hole steam tip. As I said, a big 1.5 litre boiler, 1500 watt heating element. So there's quite a bit of power there but my own abilities aren't quite there. I'm not a professional barista. I'm not used to using pro commercial espresso machines, and I've just not quite got the knack of properly steaming milk and getting the texture right with a machine this powerful. I'm gonna do another video, hopefully, over the next couple of days, a bit of practice and a bit of tweaking. I'm gonna come back and do another video showing steaming on this machine, a bit of a steaming tutorial once I've figured it out myself. If I was going to use this machine in a commercial setting, if I was going to set up a small coffee shop where I've not got much room and I need a small espresso machine, I'd definitely go for the Pro, uh, the Pro 1 group or 2 group because I would want the ability to plumb it in. I think any commercial use, having to mess around, fill in a water tank, even though it is a big water tank, and having to mess around emptying the drip tray isn't something I would personally want to be doing constantly in a commercial setting. But as a home barista machine with a three litre water tank, fairly big drip tray, you know, I think that's absolutely fine. But there isn't a massive deal of difference at the moment in between the Ruby and the Ruby Pro that Gadget Direct. 
So if I was going to invest 1500 quid on this machine, I would be toying with the idea of investing 400 quid more and going for the Pro with the much bigger boiler and the option to plumb it in. So that's it for now. As I said, I will be coming back and doing another video with the Ruby, hopefully showing me getting the steam bang on and producing perfect microfoam for that AR. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button. Thank you very much. If you've not subscribed to my channel, there should be an image around here somewhere. If you click that, you'll subscribe to my channel. Tatty bye. Ta-ta. I wasn't... Oh, horses. Should be in fields.